this is a spiritual war, mm -hmm. but the spirit in this case, and then maybe almost every case plays out into the natural where your spiritual guidance, as far as standing leads to standing in the natural as well. And it, there is the overlap, right? It, the, the strength of our, our relationship, our walk with, with the Lord, our, our position in him is, is also being tested and in a good way. I mean, many of us who have walked with him for many years are being fortified to, to keep our relationship with him foremost and, and be strong in the sense of we're not going to bow to evil. We're not going to compromise uh, in, in any way. Our love for others has to be stronger than ever. And our identification of the wiles of the enemy yeah. have to be discernible to a level that we've never had before either. So it is at all levels, those who are babes in Christ or us seasoned veterans are being trained in the, in the art of war. Right. Really? So yeah. in, in reading some of it, one of, uh, one of the, the thoughts that stood out was the in his name portion of the standing, right? Yeah. And I mean, I was really appreciative to be reminded of the fact of a relationship with somebody. If I sent you out in my name and you went someplace and you said, I'm here on behalf of Tom Marcassani uh, and that person doesn't know me, they're going to be like, so what? You know, welcome, you know, Thomas, it's good to see you. <laughs> but if I sent you out to my cousin, let's just say, right? And I say, hey, Thomas, I need a favor. Could you go to my cousin? I really need some help. And you go to him and you say, I'm here in Tom's name. And he says, oh, okay, whatever you need. Uh, that carries the relationship is what carries the power that goes with That's the name, realm. right? Yeah. Because it is a spiritual fight that is lived out in the, in the practical. And we have to learn the skills of the warfare to be, to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the way you're saying it is right on because most of us have been asleep at the wheel, so to speak, for, for many years when it comes to our national um, duties, really, the, the duty of a, of a free, we, the people is to be able to know what you're standing for, first of all, and that is the study of the constitution, the declaration, the bill of rights, the federalist papers, the foundations of our nations that, that our nation will, and I say nations, maybe somebody's hearing this from other nations, but whatever the foundation is, when we stand upon those and through the spiritual side, our foundation is our relationship with Christ, our faith in him. And then out of that springs everything else, our love, our love for others, our love for our nation, um, our family is going to be able to see him and that we stand united with them in spirit with one passion and love for him. And out of that flows the, uh, the strength and courage. You know, it takes courage right now. Like I said, in our, in, in our class, the constitution class, I said, it takes courage to, to realize that you don't know too much, right? But you're willing to still learn and go out and, and be in a, you know, find out what it takes to be uh, a leader in your community and support those who are doing the same, who have the same mindset. They want to see a free America. They want to see a uh, you know, people who are godly uh, step up into leadership and support them both physically, financially. And there's the word stand again, right? Who are you standing with? If, if, you, if you were to ask me, um, you know, who are you with? I, I should be able to tell you, well, I stand with this person and here's why. You know, and I stand with that person because here's why. And we're in the same battle together. When you talked about the faith of somebody that you're voting for, you kind of framed it in their reliability and their trustworthiness. Can you readdress that for our audience? Some of the framers of the Constitution and the founding fathers had written about this. And their premise was that if you do not elect people who have a fear of God, 
a relationship with God. Uh, then when you're not looking, which is most of the time, and they're in a private setting in a back room making, or in a front room, making some conversations and deals with others, um, if, have, if they have a fear of man over their fear of God, it doesn't matter what oath they have or what paper they signed or what pledge they took, it is going to crumble in that pressure of the fear of man. So in that regard, they put that at the top of a list of candidates, just like it would have been in the biblical times in, the, in, the Deuter in uh, Deuteronomy, I believe it was, where it's listed out, these are the qualifications of a leader. Um, or even in Timothy, these are the qualifications of a leader. Um, 2 Corinthians 1.24 but I don't want to imply, this is Paul writing, but I don't want to imply that as leaders, we coerce you or somehow want to rule over your faith. Instead, we are your partners who are called to increase your joy. And we know that you already stand firm because of your strong faith. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones we want to look for. Where are the ones with the strong faith because they may not be the most eloquent, they may not be the richest, they may not be the nicest looking, but if they have strong faith, I'm going to stand with them in, in the times of trial, and we want to put those in leadership. We yes. are in a situation of compromise and corruption, because those who are supposed to be serving are serving themselves and not serving their God, the God, okay? And what, when, what, you know, Benjamin Franklin, you mentioned him, he also said, our cause is the cause of all mankind. We are fighting for their liberty in defending our own. So what he's saying is, every man wants to be free. Every man doesn't want somebody ruling over them who's corrupt and tyrann tyrannical. They want to be free. So we're fighting for our own liberty and that means all mankind is going to benefit from it. So when we say we want people who are godly to serve us, we're saying we want to be remain free or get our freedom back because that is a top priority of those we should be putting yeah. in office. Yeah. Can I read something from President sure. Trump's 1776 commission? Absolutely. So this came out like, oh, when did it come out? I think January um, 19th is the day before inauguration, this was out. This was the President Trump's 1776 commission calls for national unity around America's founding values. So I'm just gonna read a short paragraph. The renewal of American unity will depend on every American willing to stand up against tyranny in their everyday life, the author said. Above all, we must stand up to the petty tyrants in every sphere who demand that we speak only of America's sins while denying her greatness. The report states, at home, in school, at the workplace, and in the world, it is the people and only the people who have the power to stand up for America and defend our way of life. Amen. That's that's really well uh, well said, well written. I'm glad you you shared that, and it's very relevant for what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Because the stand part of this whole portion of the study uh, is is critical. Now, of course, in the spiritual sense, in the spiritual warfare standpoint, we are overlapping. Right? We're saying the spiritual war plays out in the physical realm, and it mm -hmm. doesn't mean we take up arms in in the flesh is just the opposite we stand strong from a place of victory knowing yes. we are free right and like thomas Paine said these are the times that try men's souls right can i read the rest of that quote sure the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country but he that stands, there it is again, he that stands by it now 
deserves the love and thanks of men and women. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods, and it would be strange indeed if we, if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. Thomas wow. Paine. <laughs> That's a beautiful Verse quote. Six. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might, talking about the the spiritual armor. So let's let's spend some time talking about that, the individual warfare. How do you see it? It springs out of that core of relationship with the Lord Jesus in his name, knowing him, walking with him, um, getting our daily sustenance from him. Uh, you know, those sometimes I've heard it in my past, you know, oh, you got to put on the armor of God and and, you know, every day you got to confess it and you got to uh, you got to do this. You should do that. You should do this. And and over the last several years or so, the Lord has really reminded me of it doesn't it's not an effort to walk in victory when you're already victorious. But yes. but of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so that you're protected as you confront the slanderer for you are destined for all things, and will rise victoriously. So he's the Lord's telling us, you will come out of this place with the armor on, and you're going to wear it and be victorious. So put on truth as the belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet, alert then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. And take the mighty razor-sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. Mm. Beautiful. But I thought that put it so well. And it is, all of those are personal. It's very personal. It's not mm -hmm. tell somebody else to do these things, right? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not, let me preach to you how to put on the armor of God. It is an encouragement that this is what every believer has as already in their armory. It's there. It's just, are we putting it on and walking in that? 